Maybe he'll show me his secret kata, the Death Dragon. And I'll show him my secret kata, the Secret Kata. Catchy. Check it out. I don't tell anyone you saw that. No problem. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Geeko. Today we're gonna look at some more Ninja Turtle stuff. Yes, enough of that horror five for now. Now all of you might have noticed that I am a Ninja Turtle fan, as evidenced from the uh, big film that Steven Wells make, wink wink, and the last game review of uh, the Manhattan Projects. Well some of you might have noticed that there's a new 2012 CG animated Ninja Turtle series which is very excellent and go watch it right now. The new series pays homage to all the Ninja Turtles merchandise and series, from the old cartoons and the movies to the comic books. It seems to take the best aspect from all of them and mix them into one, which makes it brilliant. Oh god, I missed that first Ninja Turtles movie. It's only one of my favourite movies of all time. Uh... Well, today we're not here for movies or TV series or cartoons or whatever. We are here for video games. And yeah, it seems like no one's going to do it and no one probably will. I'm going to take a look at all the online games you can get based on the new Ninja Turtles cartoon. I uh, don't really want to say Flash games because, well, they're a little bit more complicated than your usual Flash game. In fact, some of them resemble full retail games, maybe something that relates to people paying for on an App Store or Steam. All of these games can be located on the Nickelodeon website, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles part. So let's dive right into the first one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Throwback. Yes indeed, the name of this game is pretty much a pun. Not only do you throw people back at the Shredder, it is also a throwback to Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time video game. No, not that one. Let's never speak of that one again. I'm of course talking about the Super Nintendo one. Eh, the Hyperstone Heist on the Sega is uh, pretty much the same game as well. This game is pretty much a recreation of the Shredder boss battle on one of the first levels, where you throw foot soldiers back at the machine. The game is very simple, you dodge the lasers, you beat up these foot soldiers and you throw them back in the machine and it just keeps going and going and going and going on forever. With the added bonus of Turtles Moonwalking. Whoa. The music is excellent, it's a remake of one of the original tracks from the SNES game and the sound effects are pretty spot on. My only complaint is that the turtles don't really make any noise. I also got to mention, does this mean that at some point the new Turtles are going to have a Technodrome with the Shredder working with the Krangs? Because, well I missed that. And of course the graphics are nice and sharp. Your health bar pretty much means nothing if the lasers hit you, but the health bar is there for you to get a few hits from the foot soldiers. Apart from that there's not much here to say. It's a pretty fun game for about 5 or 6 minutes, it's free, check it out. The next game is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ninja Turtle Tactics 3D. Jeez, they could have just put Tactics 3Ds on the end. Oh well. This game is a top down view, sort of reminds me of Dynasty Warriors with less people. You go from room to room which repeats in cycles eventually because you're still in the lair and you fight off your other brothers and holographic images of them. The controls are simple, just hit and jump and also a super attack much like Dynasty Warriors. All the turtles have the same voices, which is a bit disappointing again. And the music in the background sort of a techno remix of the new theme song from the new series. The layout of this game also reminds me from the first few games you got for the 2003 TV series on the consoles and PC. The power-ups that you can pick up include pizza and pizza boxes for regaining health, shuriken boxes which gives you sort of a 360 attack around you, and mutagen which you can pick up and power up your ultimate mushu attack shall we say. Each turtle has a slightly different animation when they perform their Mushu attack, but the basic functions are the same and deals pretty much the same amount of damage. This is a lot more fun than the last one, but it's still pretty much a repeating kind of game. You just go through room and room and room and just trying to get a high score. It's, you know, like old days arcade games. 
I also have to mention with this one and some of the later games on the main menu there's a little icon screen that can give you a link to a uh, PDF file which allows you to print out some silly stuff uh, including banners and folding up and coloring stuff, you know, kid stuff. Not much else to say here apart from uh, well, the graphics are pretty decent on low and high settings and uh, runs very smoothly. My only complaint is that sometimes the controls feel a bit too smooth, like you're standing on ice and running along and sliding around a little bit more than you should do. Apart from that it's a decent fun game and again it's free so can't really complain. Next we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtle Run. As the name implies this is one of those games where you just keep running to the right and not get caught by the deathly blackness from the left. From what I can gather the survival mode is pretty much exactly the same thing apart from you're in an endless run and the story mode is well, the same game, but there's kind of a tiny story that you're chasing some monster and you're trying to catch up to him. So story mode is pretty much a race, a catch up, and survival mode is just, but well, also a race, but not get killed by the blackness that's following you. From the video you're looking at now, you might be thinking I'm playing really badly, but actually no, I don't think it's my fault. The controls are very wonky and it feels impossible to catch up to Leatherface on the first level. There's just something odd about the controls and they can't seem to escape or dodge out of objects that get in my way. Also sometimes it feels unresponsive, for example with Michelangelo, the hookshot doesn't work all the time. Sometimes I'm just stuck in a corner trying to get hookshot to work and then, well before I know it, I'm dead. The graphics are decent enough and the music is well, also decent enough, nothing special there. And each turtle has a somewhat different special power when they're jumping. I'd like to say Donatello is a lot easier because he doesn't have to aim at something to do a hook shot, but I still have trouble navigating with him. There's just something off about the controls when he jumps. I just can't pinpoint what it is. Have a go yourself and you know exactly what I mean. Not much else to say here, but you probably want to skip this one. Sewer Run is run of the mill. And next we have Tales from the Turtle Lair. Yes, it's a six part animated comic book with pretty nice effects, sound effects and nice pictures. The storyline is pretty decent. Uh, so yeah, go read it. By the way, the art style is a bit of the show, a bit of the show's flashback cartoon scenes and also a bit of the original comics all blend into one. So yeah, it looks really good. And finally on the last game, this is the game that brought me to this page in the first place, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Dark Horizon. This game is a 2D side scroller, much like the classic platformer. It's a bit of Castlevania, a bit of Ninja Turtles, and a bit of uh, Metroid from the NES. The controls are fluent, the fighting is fluent, each turtle has his own special powers and attacks, they all have different stats. And throughout the game you can change turtle to whatever suits your need. There's also a scoring system of how many enemies you defeat, but it's not important because, well, apart from yourself, no one's really going to see it. I found that after a while, I was just running through and jumping past the enemies if they were blocking my way. There are four levels to this game, uh, but unfortunately all four levels look very similar. After all, they're all in the sewers. The only difference is that on the third level there's a lot of swimming sections, yes I know, and on the last level there's some sort of building styles under the sewers because you're near the subway stations. But all this doesn't mean anything because the level layouts are pretty much the same, go somewhere, press a switch and then go somewhere and fight the boss. Luckily the bosses are a highlight, all four of them are not in the show and are very unique and special in themselves. All of them have sort of a fight pattern that once you master you can defeat it very quickly and easily. Apart from the last one, Leatherface seems to well not have a weak spot and not really a pattern. Which is unfortunate because that means the last boss can either spam you and just destroy you quickly or die very easily depending on your luck. And there's nothing more frustrating than losing all four of your turtles on the final boss and then have to restart the whole level all over again and run through this entire maze. For me this is one of the most stylized and best looking turtles game I've seen in a long time. And if they made an animated series or comic book with this style I'd watch it. So if anyone's watching this and they work for Nickelodeon, please make a short video or a film in this drawing style. It is really cool and really good. Next, despite what you might be thinking, this online game does have a save feature as long as you don't delete your internet's temporary files. So don't worry if something crash or you close the browser down because when you load it back up again, luckily everything should be there and the game remembers what levels you have completed so far. 
The controls of this game are also quite reminiscent of something that you might do if you were playing on an emulator of Super Nintendo. All the keys are mapped to space bar set and X, and feel really comfortable to use. Also, even if the game doesn't tell you, M stands for map, and all the menus work with the keyboard, so you don't need to swap your hands between the mouse and the keyboard all the time. Although I haven't found the escape button yet to get to the main menu. The game also features an auto pause button if you suddenly switch to a different window, which is really useful if someone messages you uh, or you have a sudden pop up. When you do start the game though, unfortunately, even though the art is really nice, some of the pictures have a really low resolution, so during the cutscenes you're going to see really pixelated pictures. Imagine playing this on a full HD screen. That's not nice. And also when you start the game, you notice that there's, uh, well, lack of music. Music only comes from when you pick up the boost power up, and boss fights, that's it. But the ambience is really nice though. But it'd be nice to have some sort of option to have sounds and music. And here's another excellent point, while playing the game you encounter all these different enemies and well yeah, they are actually different and not just paper cuts out of the previous design. There are only two kinds of level up enemies which are the same as their previous form and different colour and have more power but the rest of them are completely different. You got the lizards that hop at you, pretty much just minus drones. You got the giant mutated mushrooms which act like kind of zombies. Really, really irritating flies that seem to knock you out on the worst possible spot ever. And bats that you can never hit before it hits you. It's really annoying. I try really hard, there's no block button. I jump to hit them, I walk slowly, I try to dash past them, but nope. Bat toys hit me first. And teleporting frogs. <laughs> also this really big fly bee thing that does stuff. Mm. While going through the game, every time you exit to a new part of the level, a new area, it does have to load. And occasionally, if there's something special going on, like a kind of cutscene, it takes longer to load. But overall it doesn't take too long, usually about 5 to 10 seconds. Each level also has that annoying enemies respawn function, but thankfully, so do the items and the pizza power-ups, they respawn as well. Another annoying factor of this game is that, even though it supports a look feature where you can look beyond where if you're standing, which is very useful so you know where to jump, it also has many bottomless pits and many leap of faith moments. So you gotta jump and, well, hope it's the right path. Luckily, most of these paths, not all, are actually registered with jumping walls, so if you see a wall where you can jump down and hop back up, like a Ninja Gaiden, then you know those are safe to jump down. If those walls are non-grabbable walls and you can't jump back up, then you're probably gonna die. That's most of the time anyway. Also while traveling through these maps, sometimes there are multiple paths that you can choose, but there's nothing stopping you from exploring them, which sort of defeats the purpose of making people play again because they want to explore a different path, because well, there's nothing stopping them. While playing through the game, you also notice these certain areas where a, well, partner turtle will suddenly appear to help you. They're quite useful, but they're usually fighting off enemies in the distance, so it doesn't stop you from picking up score yourself. And one last thing to point out before going to the bosses is that, yes, the swimming level, it's nowhere near as bad as the Ninja Turtles 1. In fact, it's it's okay, it's decent. My only problem is that if you want to jump out the water, you're going to have momentum, so you got to travel downwards and then go up again. Another problem with the swimming is that as soon as you touch the wall, you instantly slow down and stop. But I've never died in the water, only once have I ran out of air, but there's many air bubbles around scattered throughout the swimming sections for you to pick up, so you're in no fear of drowning at all. One last nitpick is this cutscene right here. For some reason, some musicians drip onto the turtles and they're fine. So it turns out Mitchell doesn't affect them at all in this, well, universe anyway. But then in the game it kind of affects you and hurts you when it drops on you, so which is it? So yeah, the bosses. The first one is Buttercup, which... If you have enough shurikens, you really don't have to do much. Just dodge out of the way and fire your shurikens and there you go, you hardly have to fight him. The centipede boss is probably one of the more annoying ones because while well, he's quite easy because the pattern is very obvious and you can strike his weak spot, when he goes on a frenzy it's sometimes really hard to dodge, even if you see him out of the corner of your eye, you can't run out of the way and you will get hurt all the time. Then you have Midsona Ifesta, I think that's how you say it, he is a joke of a boss, apart from occasionally firing seeds at you which can hurt you, 
I found out that if I just stood on the edge of the ledge, I could just keep firing shurikens at him and he just died. So make sure you have enough shurikens on that level because he's just a pushover. Not to forget that you also get a power up here and that one of the other brother turtles comes and helps you. There's the only boss where a turtle helps you and he's the most useless boss. I'm not sure what they were thinking there, but enough. And finally you have Leatherface. He has no distinct pattern, no distinct weak spot. You just run up to him and hit him. Unfortunately, without any warning, he starts to pump your chest. Hmm. And if you try to hit him from a distance, say with Donatello or Leonardo, he shoots water from the ground. So your best bet is to, well, find as many shurikens as you can. If you don't, make sure you pick up the pizzas at the last possible moment and make sure you clear all those red lizards before engaging with Leatherface. Leatherface? Uh, I mean, Leatherhead. Still Halloween, right? So yeah, that's Ninja Turtles Dark Horizon. Really awesome art style, nice sound effects, pretty well decent gameplay and controls. It's short, it saves your gameplay status, you can replay it to get high score. In fact, you can get infinite high score if you want if you keep going back to the same territory and with the respawning monsters just keep fighting them. Although I did find myself getting a little bit bored and trying to rush through the levels and just fighting with the bosses. Ah, uh, not again. <sighs> Foot soldiers. Mm, what are you gonna do? Are you some teenager or some lazy robot? <gasps> Mikey, it's you again. <laughs> ha! Ooh, and Casey Jones. And <gasps> Mask Rider V3 Thanks guys, that was really appreciated. Well, see you guys soon, unless someone wants pizza.